I'm going to cover what athlete mental training is, why athlete mental training matters, the benefits of mental training for athletes, and then at the end, I'll cover the top tools that you can use to start training your mind as an athlete. Athlete mental training involves using certain tools and techniques to train and develop mental skills. I like to compare athlete mental training to physical training because I think it helps helps us get clear on what exactly this is or what exactly it means to train the mind because it, a lot of times it can be confusing compared to you know what it actually means to train physically which is very easy for us to feel as athletes how we train physically. But you know how if you're training physically you have a certain set of skills that you want to develop or even just one specific skill that you want to develop. Once you, defi- once you decide what that skill is, what do you do? You backtrack and you think about these different different drills that you want to do in order to develop that skill. Then what you do is you put a plan in place that will involve you completing these drills and working on the different techniques that you need to do, trusting that that work will develop the skills that you want. We take the same approach to mental training. We start with the end result. So let's say we're starting with confidence. Then we backtrack and we think, you know, what are the different drills or different tools and techniques that you can use to develop confidence? And then once more, we put that into a plan and we say, these are the actions that you need to be taking on a weekly basis or even a daily basis. And we trust that those actions will lead to the development of confidence. Now at the core of this athlete mental training is one word, no matter what skill we're working on. And that word is thinking. Your thoughts are at the core of training your mindset. Because if we're talking about mindset, if we're talking about mental skills, These all stem from the way that you are thinking. So let's take confidence, for example. If you want to develop more confidence as an athlete, we know that you need to think in a more confident way. But it's not just about thinking in a more confident way. It's about feeling that, you know, you trust yourself to go out there. You trust yourself to go play well. But where does that feeling come from? That feeling comes from having certain thoughts over an extended period of time that builds this feeling and builds this belief that you want that you can go out there and you can play well. Now let's look at managing mistakes. If you make a mistake during a game, you know that you need to move on from that mistake as quickly as possible. Because if you don't move on from that mistake and you hold on to it and you're really frustrated, what does that do? It causes you to carry that frustration with you and likely it decreases your performance moving forward in the game. Now, if you want to move on from a mistake, what do you have to do? You have to get yourself to stop thinking about the mistake. Or at the very least, you have to get yourself to think about the mistake in a different way. So no matter what mental skill we are working on, and no matter what tools or techniques or drills that we use to develop that skill, the foundation will always be your thinking. So with athlete mental training, we are really working on training the way that you think as an athlete. Now, why does this matter? Why is athlete athlete mental training important? And specifically, what are the benefits of it? Well, the reason that athlete mental training is important is because what happens when you have a poor attitude, a poor mindset, you have a lot of negative thinking, you struggle with confidence, you struggle with being able to move on from mistakes, what happens to your play? Naturally, we always see your play drop. This is where it's very easy to see your practice play different from your gameplay. You might perform really great in practice and you constantly think, Why? Why am I performing so well in practice? But then I almost feel like a different person when it comes to the games. What's going on? What's different? You know, I feel like my mechanics are the same. I just don't understand. That disconnect is mental. And so that's why mental training is so important. It's not that, you know, when you have confidence or you're able to calm your nerves, it's not that that magically helps you increase your performance. But it's that when you have a strong mental game, you allow your talents to take over. It's complementary to your physical training. Without physical training, you won't reach very high levels in your sport. We just know that because you have to develop your skills. No matter how talented you are, when you get to a certain level, you have to work harder than the guy next to you or the girl next to you in order to to make it to the next level and, and in order to keep competing and keep winning. But what happens if you have those physical skills, but you lack the mental skills? That once again is where we start to see athletes separate themselves from one another, right? So let's say that we have two athletes. One athlete is training their mind. The other athlete is not focusing on training their mind, but both of them train just as much, much physically. And we can say that both of them have the same amount of talent. If we were just looking at them at a showcase and judging them based, based on, you know, just pure talent and their skills, they're both pretty equal. 
which athlete do you think will perform better on a more consistent basis? The athlete that does mental training and the athlete that has a stronger mindset. The other athlete will perform well, and they might perform better than the other athlete at times because you do just have those games where you perform your best, that you perform great. But the word was consistency, right? Who performs well on a more consistent basis? The athlete who has a strong mind because strong mind, a strong mind helps you perform more consistently over an extended period of time. So there's two approaches that you can take to this athlete mental training. And, you know, it really, it really doesn't matter which approach you take, and it all just depends on where you are within your sport. The first approach is a reactive approach. Now, what a reactive approach means is that you're struggling right now with some sort of mental game challenge. So the main mental game challenges that I see athletes faced with and that I work on with, um, with athletes in one-on-one -on -one mental performance coaching include fear of failure, sports performance anxiety, losing their composure, so they have a tough time moving on from mistakes, a difficult time calming their nerves, low confidence, so we have some negative self-talk included in that too, um, perfectionism, social approval, right? They're looking for this approval and the confidence from other people. These are some of the main mental game challenges that I see. So if right now you are experiencing any one of those mental game challenges, what you want to make sure of is that you are reacting to that by training your mind to help reduce those mental game challenges. So a reactive approach is a great approach if you notice right now that you are struggling mentally or you're struggling with some challenge that's holding you back during games. Now, if you would like me to make more in-depth videos on any one of those mental game challenges, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Now, the other approach instead of the reactive approach is a proactive approach. Now, the interesting thing about this proactive approach is that once you start reactively training your mind, you get to a point where you feel good about yourself. You feel like you're performing better. At that point, you transition into a more proactive approach. What a proactive approach means is we understand the importance of training your mind and we understand the importance of having a strong mindset as an athlete. And so we proactively perform certain drills and use these tools to strengthen your mindset. This is a very, very similar, similar approach to what you do physically. With physical training, you don't just wait until you're performing poorly in order to practice. You don't wait till you can't hit in order to work on your swing. You don't work, you don't wait until you go, you know, 0 for 15 from uh, you know, for, for, for your shots during games in order for you to work on your shots. You are proactively working on these skills. We want to take a, the same approach to mental training. So if you notice between these two options, they're pretty similar. And they're similar because the truth is I recommend every athlete to take part in mental training. Whether you do it on your own or you do work with a coach, you need to be training your mind. It's just a matter of where are you right now within your athletic career, right? Are you struggling with something mentally? Then you have the reactive approach. With a reactive approach, you're working more targeted towards overcoming and managing one of those mental game challenges. So the tools that you choose will be specific towards managing that challenge. If you're taking more of the proactive approach, you look at what skills do I want to build that I know will help me long term become a better player. You choose the right tools and you start working on those on a consistent basis. But either way, you want to make sure you are using athlete mental training. Now, what are some of the benefits of this athlete mental training? Well, there are tons and tons of benefits, but some of the main ones include increased confidence. So you'll have more trust in yourself, more trust in your skills. You'll have the ability to calm your nerves is a big one. Um, being able to control your thinking and have more positive self-talk. Self-management, so you can control your emotions a little bit better. You'll have an increase in self-awareness, so you'll understand yourself better as an athlete. You'll have increased focus, um, increased motivation, and there are just many, many more benefits that you can experience when you work on training your mindset. Now, how do you work on training your mindset? So I mentioned earlier that you can do it on your own or you can work with a coach. And I'll mention towards, towards the end of the video about some options that you can take for training, training your mindset um, with a coach or some, some different options that I have available. But right now I want to just cover some of the main mental training tools that you can use so you can get started with training your mind on your own. So the first mental training tool that I want to discuss is self-talk. Now what self-talk means or what self-talk talk involves is just you talking to yourself, right? It's the way that you talk to yourself. It's the way you think. So this brings me back to what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, where with mental training, we're focusing on your thoughts as a player, your thoughts as an athlete. What self-talk means 
is that you're taking control of this thinking. So during games, you know how to talk to yourself in a better way. The reason that this self-talk is so important is because of something known as the thought feeling cycle. So with this thought feeling cycle, what we know is that you have a thought, right? So you have a thought of, I am, uh, I'm great, I suck today, I can't believe I made that mistake, I believe in myself. You just have any sort of thought, whether it's a positive thought or it's a negative thought. Now, what do you think that thought causes? Well, that thought will lead to you having a feeling. So we know that our feelings as players and as athletes are a result of our thinking. Now, it's not always a conscious thought. A lot of times these thoughts are happening just in the back of our mind and we're not really aware of what we're thinking. But we know that when we have a thought, it leads to a feeling. Now, if you're feeling really confident, what does that normally cause you to think about? Well, it causes you to have more of those confident thoughts. Just like if you were thinking negatively, they, those negative thoughts would cause you to, or those you're feeling negatively, those negative feelings would cause you to have more negative thoughts. And so we see this cycle take place, and that is the thought feeling cycle. Now we need to talk about the action part though, because you have thoughts and you have feelings, but games are made up of actions, right? It's you taking actions when you play. And so naturally what we see is that you have these thoughts, you have these feelings, and then those thoughts and those feelings, they lead to actions. So technically it's a thought feeling action cycle because you think negatively, you feel negatively. Then what happens to your play? Maybe you play timidly. Maybe you play scared. Maybe you play afraid. Just like if you're feeling confident because you're thinking confident and then you feel more confident, how does that cause you to play? Maybe more aggressively, play more freely, right? Because you're feeling confident. So we know that you have these thoughts, you have these feelings, it leads to a cycle, and then that cycle influences your actions. Now, if you're playing confidently, if you're playing great, playing freely, what does that cause you to do? Well, it causes you to feel better about yourself and it causes you to think better thoughts. So this is where we see this wonderful cycle taking place of your thoughts leading to your feelings, which lead to actions, which funnel back into your thoughts and feelings. And it's a wonderful cycle if it's a good cycle. It's a terrible cycle and a frustrating cycle if it's a negative cycle. Because we can also see this as an anxious cycle. And this is one of the most common thought feeling action cycles that I see in athletes that I work with where they have anxious thoughts, worrisome thoughts. Then these worrisome thoughts lead them to feel anxious, right? They feel anxiety, they experience the physical symptoms of anxiety, rapid heartbeat, right? Shallow breathing, shaking. And then what happens to their play? They play timidly, play scared because they don't wanna make mistakes because that's what they're worried about. Now, when you play that way, you think more anxious thoughts. You also think frustrating thoughts because, or, or you get frustrated at yourself because you're likely, you likely won't play as well as you wanna play in that moment. So then we see this negative cycle take place because you are experiencing this anxiety. Now, this all brings me back to the importance of self-talk. If you can control your thinking, we control the beginning of this cycle and we start to influence a more positive cycle when we play. So the way that you can start using self-talk as a tool is with, with something known as a self-talk routine. A self-talk a self routine involves you creating a list of about 10 positive statements or confident statements, and then reading that to yourself every single day. The more you read it to yourself, the more these thoughts become a habit. And the more these thoughts are a habit, the more likely you are to have this type of thinking during games. Now the next tool is visualization. So what visualization is, or what visualization means is pretty much just imagining yourself playing, right? Picturing yourself performing really well. Now, if you could go into a game and you could just picture yourself playing well, that's all that's filling your mind, thoughts of you playing your best, thoughts of you having the best game that you can have, do you think that will make you feel more anxious, more fearful, or more confident? Nine times out of 10, it will make you feel more confident. So we know that when you play, you wanna have thoughts of you performing well. Now, not thoughts of you having to perform well, because that can lead to unnecessary pressure, but thoughts of you genuinely feeling like, I've seen myself do this before, I know that I can do it again. That's what visualization can help with. So what I recommend is on a daily basis, and especially before games, you visualize. Spend about five minutes going through, imagining yourself performing well, go through some different scenarios, and really see yourself succeeding the way that you wanna succeed during the game. The next mental skill, or the next mental training tool I mean, is mindfulness. So mindfulness is a really cool one because mindfulness is both a state 
and mindfulness is a practice and the practice helps you get to the state of mindfulness. So the state of mindfulness means that you are completely and absolutely focused in the present moment. And this focus is with your attention. Your attention is centered in the present moment. Why do you feel like that might be helpful for you as a player? Well, imagine a game that you play. And during this game, you are completely focused on the game. You aren't worried about what happened in the past. You aren't worried about what happened in the future or what might happen in the future. All you are thinking about and all you're focused on is what's going on right now. How good do you feel like you'll play in that game? Probably pretty good. You know, there's no, there's no coincidence that people who describe themselves in the flow state and in the zone, they say they were just absorbed with what they were doing. They were just in the moment. That's because the more you are in the moment, the better you play. And when we go back to these mental game challenges that I mentioned earlier, one of the characteristics of any mental game challenge is that it pulls your attention out of the present moment. If you're doubting yourself, you're thinking, I don't know if I can do this. You're not focused on what you're doing. If you're afraid, you're afraid of making a mistake or you're worried or anxious about what might happen, now you're thinking about the future, right? So the more present you can be when you play, the better you'll play. That's what mindfulness helps with and that is the state of being mindful. Now, while that's a wonderful and, and, and kind of this pinnacle state or mental state to get into when you play, do you feel like that is an easy state to get into? Unfortunately, it is very difficult because what happens you try to focus in the present moment and your attention is pulled away by the the mistake you just made or it's pulled away by the people you see in the stands or somebody trash talking there's so many different things that can eat at your attention when you play this is why we need to be practicing and so the practice of mindfulness takes place by using what's known as mindfulness meditation what mindfulness meditation is is where you sit down for you know, about five to 10 minutes, that's, that's a great, great time frame to start with. So you sit down, you close your eyes, and you just start focusing on your breath. As you are focusing on your breath, naturally you'll begin thinking about different things because it's quiet, right? You're not listening to any music, there's no TV on, there's no background noise, you are in a quiet place. And so what will happen when you try to focus on your breath, but you're in a quiet place? Your mind will get loud, and your mind will start to think about different things. And that's good. That's what we want because this is where the actual training of mindfulness comes into play. So you recognize that you're thinking about something else or you're noticing a thought. And you bring your attention back onto your breath. Then you do that again and then you bring your attention back onto the breath. Now the goal is to be focused on the breath. But what we're really paying attention to is redirecting your attention because like I said, it's not very easy for you to be focused on your breath. So you want to notice the attention, bring it back. Notice the attention, bring it back. Don't feel like, oh, I'm terrible at this. I'm not good at being at practicing mindfulness meditation. The point of the practice is to work on focusing on your breath, not to be perfect focusing on your breath. Now, the next tool involves setting what are known as objectives when you play. These objectives are also known as process goals, if you've, if you've ever heard of process goals. What objectives are are cues or targets that you set for, for yourself when you play. Now, objectives can be used for practices, and they, they can also be used for games. Practice objectives answer the question, what am I working on today? And this is where you give yourself some very clear intent and a clear target for, for what you are focused on and what you are working on that day. And then for games or for performances, these objectives answer the question, what do I need to focus on to give myself the best chance to perform well today? Now, one of the characteristics of both of these types of, of objectives, whether it is a practice objective or a game objective, is that the objective needs to be 100% within your control. What we're doing with these objectives is we are centering your attention once more in the present moment, and we're making sure that you are focused on the process of your game instead of focusing too much on the outcome of your game. Now, the next tool that, that you can use is some just journal writing, or you know, we can just categorize it as uh, just writing in general. And now this writing, it might not seem like a mental training tool, but I, I found writing to be very, very helpful. Number one, because when you write, you're able to get the thoughts out of your head. And so what that's starting to build is self-awareness. The more you are aware of your thinking, the more you are aware of you know, your patterns of thinking, what you think about in anxious moments versus what you think about when you are feeling confident, that awareness and, and understanding leads to control. And ultimately, that's what we are after when it comes to your thinking. We're after control of your thinking. 
But something else that writing helps with is also evaluating your game. So let's say that you had a really bad game and you wanna go through and you want to process the game after you play. Well, once again, you wanna get those thoughts out of your head and onto paper. And I have all the athletes that I work with in one-on-one -on -one coaching go through an evaluation process after their practices and games by filling out some questions on paper. So use some writing for yourself. You can do this in many different forms. You can just write a page a day in a journal. You can do some evaluations after games. You can just keep track of your thoughts throughout the week. But writing is a very valuable mental training tool. And then the last mental training tool that I wanna mention is just some, some breath work. Now this breath work is, simple, is similar to the mindfulness meditation because you know when you're doing the mindfulness meditation, you are focused on your breath, you're focused on your breath and your breathing. But this breath work comes in handy during games. So when you're playing a game and you wanna be focused, you wanna move on from a mistake, you want to reduce your anxiety, so calm your nerves a little bit, breath work can help tremendously. And what I'm referring to with this breath work is actually something known as count breathing. With this count breathing, we can call it five by five breathing. Because what you do is you breathe in for a count of five, then you breathe out for a count of five. And you do this over and over again, in for five, out for five. The reason that this helps so much is because number one, whenever you are anxious, upset, fearful, doubting yourself, it's likely that you are not taking nice, deep breaths. So as simple as it is, if you can take those deep breaths, that will help calm you down in the moment and sim simplify your thinking and center you in the present moment. But also when you focus on the counting, we once again are taking control of that thinking. So let's say you're, you're focused on a mistake. All you can think about is that mistake that you just made. What do you need to do to let go of that mistake? Well, it's not about letting go of that mistake. It's about thinking of something else so you stop thinking about that mistake. Focusing on some counting when you do the breathing, like I said, it calms you down, but it starts to take control of your thoughts in that moment. So those are some main mental training tools that you can use as an athlete to get started with athlete mental training. If you'd like me to go into more detail or make some more in-depth videos on any one of those tools, please let me know in the comments below. Now, how can you get started with some athlete mental training if you wanna do so on a more, in a more kind of guided way or working with a coach? Well, there are a few different options that I offer. One of them is the one-on-one -on -one mental performance coaching that I offer, and you can learn more about that in the link in the description below. Another option, or the other two options, will be for you depending on your age. So I do have the option of a mental training course for youth athletes, and this is great for athletes between the ages of about nine and 13 slash 14. So if you're a parent watching this, that's a great option for your younger athlete. Now, the other option is mental training advantage, which is great for athletes that are older, um, you know, middle school, high school, um, college athletes as well. So once again, I put links to both of those in the description below to learn more. I hope you enjoyed this video on athlete mental training. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and please hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video because I put out new videos each week on sports psychology and mental training.